Hello, my name is John, and this is the Mask Face Journal, and this is what I read this week. Let's begin with Teen Titans number three, written by Benjamin Percy and art by Koi Palm. This issue was a little bit too exposition-y for me. I do like that the team is communicating and I like the chemistry between Kid Flash and Raven, but it got to be a little too much when everyone started listing their similarities to Damien and his situation. Also, Damien's plan is the worst. He dismisses going to Batman or The Flash for help because they need to learn how to deal with their own problems. Okay, that's fine, but his alternative to that is not exactly going to help them to do that. Titans number 6, written by Dan Abnett and art by Brett Booth. I'm feeling a bit conflicted about this one. This story has by and large felt like a Mark Wade-like Wally West Flash story, and that holds true for the ending as well. Where I'm conflicted is that it tells us as readers to let go of our image of how Wally's status quo should be, and that things might be very different from how they were before the New 52. Then again, it doesn't close the door completely, it's just very unlikely to deal with these things in the near future, and that's pretty sad to me. The Flash, number 13, written by Joshua Williamson, and art by Neil Gogue. This is pretty much a one and done Christmassy story, which most people have had their fill of by now. It's not a bad one though. My main gripe is that again, it's mostly about Kid Flash, not Barry. Sure, Barry is in it and it builds on the cliffhanger of last issue, but this is The Flash and I want to read about The Flash. A pet peeve of mine is when covers outright lie to you about the contents of the book, and this one does that. Both the main cover and the variants are not representative of the pages within. Justice League vs Suicide Squad number 2, written by Joshua Williamson and art by Tony S. Daniel. With the exception of Batman's repeated moral indignation over the very concept of the Suicide Squad and Deadshot in particular, this issue is pretty damn fun. I keep wondering though what the League hopes to accomplish by attacking the Suicide Squad. Either Waller blows their heads off with their implants, or they get arrested and thrown back into prison, where Waller can pick them back up. Also, is it just me or is Amanda Waller beginning the issue? by doing a Kitty Pride impersonation? Wonder Woman number 13, written by Greg Rucka and art by Renato Guides. I don't really get it. Wonder Woman is in some sort of trance-like state throughout the entire issue, while Steve Trevor is playing Rambo, trying to keep them both alive on the island that was thought to be Themyscira. My main problem with this entire story is I don't feel like I know why things are happening and why people are doing what they're doing. Why is Wonder Woman in a zombie-like state seeing delusions? Why does Veronica Kale want access to Themyscira? Why is there even a fake Themyscira in the first place? That last one is probably going to get answered in the next story arc, but I don't feel super confident about the first two. All-Star Batman number 5, written by Scott Snyder and art by John Romita Jr. I don't know what to say. On one hand, it's as intense as ever. On the other, the ending is kind of a cheat. This whole story has really been about a MacGuffin, and in true 60s Batman style, Batman just happens to have a figurative canister of anti-MacGuffin spray in his utility belt. It kind of had to end on a cheat too, because the risks were so ridiculously high and the story couldn't possibly deliver on them. Also, that last panel is probably the cheesiest thing I've seen in a modern Batman comic. Detective Comics number 947, written by James Tinney IV and art by Alvaro Martinez. This is really quite good. It's a well-told story with compelling characters. I can't think of anything negative to say about it, really, except we don't really find out anything about the main villain at the end. But that's not really a problem, but rather an opportunity to tell future stories. I've been really impressed by this run in Detective Comics and its ability to tell really emotionally impactful stories. Kudos. Action Comics number 970, written by Dan Jurgens and art by Patrick Searcher. I don't think this issue really does anything to really progress the story. It's basically just the people telling Superman what we as readers already learned last issue. It's really weird when I'm taking Lex Luthor's side in a Superman story, but I feel like I'm supposed to because everyone else is completely unreasonable. They're basing everything on a vision from the future, but that vision is known to be faulty because they can change it. By its very nature, it doesn't work. So that was what I read this week. Did you enjoy this video? Please like, comment, subscribe, and share this video, and do whatever. If you didn't like it or disagree with me, please let me know in the comments, and still share this video because I, I, I want that, please. Thank you. And I am done for this week.